This is the 24th of December of 2020, and the title of this study is Romans chapter 10. First, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless everyone within the sound of my voice. I ask that you put us all in a hedge of protection, Father. Give us knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and dreams and visions from you, Father. Hallelujah. I ask you to put every one of us in a hedge of protection and saturate us with the blood of Christ. And I thank you for waking us up another day to study your word and to spread your and to spread your gospel. Father, please keep it cool outside and cool inside and quiet inside. And give me the understanding and the knowledge, the wisdom, Father, and keep on to continue to give us all experience with you and revelation from you. And uh Touch my eyesight and my speech, Father, that only your word goes out. In Jesus' name. Well, like I said, this is Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to every one that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall, dis who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord... Who has believed our report? So the faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went out unto all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel saith all day long, I have stretched forth my hand unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Woo! Wow. Um, so, Roman 10, okay, here, Paul is telling us uh, his people, the Israelites, have a zeal for their knowledge, not for the things of God. So, for whatever they believe, whatever traditions they made up, whatever laws they tacked to, the Ten Commandments. And mind you, when Jesus walked the earth, he said, the only commandments that hinge on all ten of what, what they were given was to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. See, nobody that lived under that law could keep all that law. 
That's why they kept adding more and more and more laws on it. One of the reasons. So, um, now that Christ has come, that's what he expects. And we are, uh, as Gentiles that have been grafted into this vine, the, Jew, the vines of the Jew, you know, we're the children of God now because we've accepted Christ. So we'll get into that later. Uh, oh, what what it, it comes down to is that people want their own way. They don't want to surrender to Jesus Christ. They think they've got it all together. Ooh, I don't want to always. I don't want to never be that way. I want to always stay in a posture of repentance. I want to renew my mind daily with the Word. I want to continue in prayer and then continue in the gift of tongues, of praying in tongues. I want to. I want to continue to have this relationship between my, me, myself, and Christ. Keep growing, and I don't want anything to hinder my relationship on this side of heaven or that side. Hallelujah! Thank you, Father. So they love their transgression. They love their trans. I'm sorry, traditions. Yes, transgressions. They love their traditions more than they love God. And Jesus even says this to them in Mark chapter seven, verse nine. Okay, Mark seven, and verse nine. Let's go back to Mark seven. Hallelujah, and verse nine. And he said unto them, Fool, well, ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Wow. I don't want to be in their shoes. Uh, so what's biblical zeal? Z-E-A-L. All right. Um, it means passion, enthusiasm in the pursuit of anything, and eagerness of desire to accomplish or obtain some object okay this can be manifested in a person or a thing okay or for a good or bad cause see so so what if it what it comes down to is they rejected christ jesus they still went about trying to establish their law and their own righteousness like i said a minute ago a minute or two ago they kept on tacking on tacking on laws and kept uh, putting such burdens on the people that nobody could have uh, even attained to what they, were, they wanted them to attain to. Okay, so in another thing, let me tell you also that we know that the law, and even Paul tells us that the law was a, a tutor, but it was brought in. In fact, God gave it to uh, the Israelites so they would know that they needed a savior because then they would know that they could not live the way a holy creator wanted them to live holy and righteous you know before him offer themselves as a sacrifice instead they use the animal sacrifices that's a whole nother subject there a whole nother uh study okay so let's look at romans chapter 1 verse 17 Romans 1 and verse 17. For therefore is the righteousness of, the, righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay, remember that. So when Christ came, the law error was over. Christ came to fulfill the law, not to abolish it, but to fulfill it. And he said exactly what was meant and what was needed and uh, what we should be doing. So, um, so now on this, like I said, now on this side of the cross, we, we live by faith, by faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. This is how anyone that is willing to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is justified, righteous, and redeemed. Let's look at uh, Romans chapter 4, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 4 again. Okay, Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness is to everyone that believeth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no longer are we... Uh, to attain or try to attain 
the law of Moses and the laws and all those other things that requirements that the, the Jewish leaders pop, popped on to the people. See? Um, and let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. But in him ye are in Christ Jesus, who of God is made as wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption and this is the same thing that Colossians let me see if I can find it real quick here um, Colossians says in 2.10 I think it is that it wasn't in my notes but that came to my mind just now so Colossians 2.10 and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principalities and I'll write that also up here Okay, that is awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so we see in uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 11 and 13, which we just read, told us what to do to, to be righteous. Okay, so the word is extremely near, and he's saying it's in your mouth. I can look at that again, 10 and then verse um, 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. You see? So it's close. And that just makes me think of when Jesus sent the disciples two by two to go into the cities before him um, and, and tell, the, tell them, like, spread the word. The kingdom, of God, the kingdom of God is near. Okay? Excuse me. So this is why the disciples went out from town to town, yeah, and explained the kingdom is near. Sorry, I didn't even know I wrote that down. Hmm. So um, I see Romans chapter 10, verse 20, the same as Isaiah 65, verses 1 and 2. And that one I want to take you to, Isaiah 65, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 65. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 65, and then 1 and 2. Isaiah 65, 1 and 2. I am sought of them that asked not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me. Unto a nation that was not called by my name, I have spread out my hands all day unto the rebellious people which walked in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. See, exactly what uh, it's saying here in Romans and what Jesus said in Mark uh, seven, uh, 9, verse 7, you know, where he said that they keep their, they keep their traditions and they set aside the commandments of God. Yeah, it was Mark chapter 7, verse 9. Okay. So, uh, Paul's speaking toward the, the future. He's speaking to us, too. You know, even though the book of Romans, and we're going to, I think I have that wrote down there, too. We're going to discuss that in a minute. But it was, the book of Romans was written to... The Roman church. It was a newly formed church, by the way, at that time. So what Romans 10 is saying is when we believe, we don't have to run to and fro looking for him. You know, looking into every wind of doctrine. Everything that goes by, you're going to chase after it. No, be grounded, you know, and set your eyes on Christ. So, um... Keep Jewish law, okay, but, so we don't have to go back to the way the Jews are. Just like I told you in a few minutes, a few minutes ago, we cannot hold on to that. We cannot obtain to what those laws were saying. So Christ is always with us. So hallelujah. So you know, see, and that's another reason we don't have to go back under the law because Christ has given us of Himself, and He lives in us when you have Holy Spirit. And the evidence of you having Holy Spirit is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit which speaks through you, which is this gift of tongues. You just have to ask for it and believe that you've been heard, 
because I, I, Hebrews, I think it's 11, 6, but in Hebrews, we're told that when we ask, we have to believe, we have to believe, even in James, James is telling us the same thing, if you have to believe what you're asking for, and that you're asking someone that will be rewarding you for asking, and that's truly what happens. So, truly, each individual has the responsibility to either surrender to Christ Jesus or not, and if we look at first. Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 let's look at 1st Corinthians thank you Holy Spirit chapter 2 verse 14 but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned okay so the so Christ Jesus said it is finished. And then we see it when he said it was finished at John. Um, let's look at that. Let's look first at Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke 9, and then verse 23. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And then let's look at John chapter 19, verse 30. John uh, 19, and verse 30. John 19, and verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He said, It is finished. Remember that. Hallelujah. So who was Paul writing the letter to? It was to the Roman church, a newly formed Roman church. Okay. Uh, Rome was, see, Romans was pinned around um, mid-50s. CE with the help of a secretary. Okay, Paul is speaking about Israel, mainly Jews. Okay, he's speaking to mainly Jews in Israel at that time. So they heard the gospel, but they decided to continue in the law of Moses. That's what I was saying a few minutes ago to you. So once again, Paul states that the law does not save, it doesn't give uh, justification or righteousness. And that only belief in Christ Jesus can you um, can you enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we have to remember that the laws did not save us, and they will never save us by keeping. Which means whatever we do, the works that we do, will not give us not save our soul, and will not give us uh, righteousness. It will not give us justification. It will not redeem us only by the blood of Christ and the believing of the Son of God, Jesus Christ is our Savior. Hallelujah. So in conclusion here, uh, the, uh, it's by hearing the word and taking action. You hear it. See, there's always our part and God's part. God gave his son. We are to accept his son. Hallelujah. Always our part and his part. And it's always our decision. So meaning, believe in the word and then you are justified. So, Belief equals faith equals eternal life with our Creator, Father Yahweh, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, it is finished. John 19 and verse 30. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going, I got enough time, so I'm going to end with a prayer that I like ending with. And then, like I said, if uh, you don't agree, don't say nothing. If you agree, say amen. Remember that time is space and, and you know, it does not exist with God between you and God. That's why you can say a prayer here in the United States and all the way around the world, you know, and, and Japan or wherever that's at, you know what I mean? Around the world, there's somebody, you're praying for somebody and they get healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, Yahweh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to forgive me of known and unknown sins. I ask you to show me any dark spots in me so I can repent of them. Father, forgive me for not forgiving myself. Father, I ask you to help me forgive myself and others that have hurt me. 
Father, of my own free will, I choose to forgive anyone that has caused me pain or injured me. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over these sins, wash away my sins, the sins of others that have wounded me, and the sins of my ancestors. Father, I ask in Jesus' name for you to apply that dunamis power, that power that raised Christ from the dead, to my sins and to my soul wounds. Father, I know you hear me, so I thank you for hearing me, and I thank you for healing my sin, my uh, soul wounds and forgiving my sins. Hallelujah. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The scriptures that back up this prayer is Leviticus chapter 17, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 to 14, 3 John verse 2, and Psalms 103, 12. Father, I ask you to upload this video quickly with no hiccups. And I ask you, Father, to bless everyone that does hear it, this message. In Jesus' name, amen.